Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle back again, and um, today I'm going to work on a reel that was on my to-do list. It's one reel that I showed you a while ago about flea market finds, and uh, I just it just came to think of it. Somebody reminded me that I hadn't done it yet, and uh, you know I find a lot of reels like these. These are pen reels at the flea market. Uh, we're not going to get to those today. I'm going to bring those off to the side, and. Uh, I can tell you quite honestly, we've been slammed. Uh, the season has just broken out here for bluefish and striped bass and black sea bass. Uh, so a lot of folks are bringing reels in the tune-up. Some of them have been broken by some of those big predator fish and uh, it's keeping me busy. So uh, I get reels uh, from some folks like this one that uh, was brought in that uh, they took it apart, tried to clean it up, get it ready for the season, and it didn't go back together the right way. Also getting reels mailed in to me. Uh, this one, I believe, is in pieces. Uh, somebody took it apart, and it didn't, um, didn't make its way the right way. But again, I mentioned I'm slammed, and that made me think. I did a flea market find video a little while ago where I showed you a uh, pen slammer and a uh, St. Croix rod that I had purchased. And the only thing I got to do with that was to take the braid off. So today I'm going to take the Pen Slammer 260 apart. We're going to tune it up. It's in nice condition right now, so we'll give it a tune up. I'll show you how the reel is made, or what it's made of from a manufacturing standpoint. And um, we're going to get this one back on that St. Croix rod and take it fishing. Uh, but I did pull the braid on it. I was a little bit concerned about that. If you don't know the age of the line that you're uh, fishing with, uh, and I recommend changing it annually, it's a cheap fix. Uh, but if you don't know the age of it, take it off and, and by all means replace. And I, I'm not a braid fan. I will probably replace that with um, mono. So we'll take the handle off and we'll get going on this reel. It's the Slammer 260. It's the smallest of that version. And the Slammer, from a pen standpoint, has a different drag system. So a lot of times you'll see a, um, a reference to Slammer drag systems in some of the reels. It has uh, drags up top, but it also has drags underneath. So we'll show you how to service the drags on uh, both sides of that reel. So I take the, um, the spool off. That gives me access to the case. I'm going to remove that. And as I'm removing that, just reminding you, uh, wear a protective glove if you can. Uh, keep that oil and uh, grease and contamination and dirt and everything else that's inside a reel uh, off of your hand. I uh, kind of wish that I could do that with my working hand, but I have some trouble there in terms of gri grasping uh, small parts and pieces, and uh, so I kind of forego that, but uh, by all means you should, uh, you should use that. There's four screws here. Normally I lay these screws out on the table before I put them into the uh, parts tray, which is the other thing you see in the background there, which is where all these pieces and parts are going. Uh, I recommend the parts tray as well. And normally I'll lay all of these out just to make sure that the screws are the right size. I happen to know with this one that they are all the same size. But if you find that there's one that's smaller, please by all means uh, note the location of it. So how do you do that? You take pictures like the video that I'm doing. Uh, standard pictures off of a cell phone or just a regular camera, digital camera or the like. Taking pictures will, uh, will help you remember the sequence that you took it off and where those pieces and parts go. And of course, if you don't know where those pieces and parts go, the best thing to do is go pull a schematic. In this case, I've pulled the Slammer 260, which is what we're working on. It shows you the breakdown of all the main body assemblies, the internals, the uh, anti-reverse segment, the rotor, and the spool assemblies. And it also has the parts numbers on it. This one comes from uh, what was penparts.com and is now Mystic Parts. And uh, it also gives you a listing of the parts should any of those be broken uh, and you need to order. So I would recommend get the schematic. I recommend take pictures on the cell phone or a video camera or a digital camera. And I recommend a parts tray so that you don't lose the pieces and parts as you go about servicing the reel. Okay, we took the four screws off them. We should be able to remove the side plate. And the side plate, uh, is it's a metal side plate. So uh, you're going to have a side plate going to have the burring, and you're going to have a shim behind the burring on the main gear. So this one, I'm going to take the, uh, the rotor off and everything just to make sure it's nice and clean. And to do that, we've got to get to that crease there. And I have a uh, stack of 
cotton swabs that I use to clean. And you have to back this all the way down. That's going up, so wait on it. And you'll find that there's a little set screw there in the main shaft, the axle shaft. And uh, that screw has to be removed from the cross wind assembly in order to uh, get the main gear out. So down below, it's pretty simplistic. It's a cross wind gear. It's a uh, cross wind block, which is what uh, the screw goes through to hold it, not, that moves the spool shaft up and down. We have a cross wind, uh, we have the axle bushing below. And once you pull that gear out, uh, that screw out, remember the orientation on this, and then you can remove the axle shaft. Once you remove the axle shaft, you can remove the main gear. The reason that you have to take that axle shaft, uh, that um, screw and the axle shaft before the main gear is that the cross wind gear is driven off the main gear and the axle shaft actually rides between the two. So there's no way you can pull this gear out uh, without removing the, the shaft. So that goes in and this goes into the parts tray. And it's a good thing I pulled it off because there is some junk in there. There's some debris on the back of the main gear. So when you're doing a servicing, you want to clean all of that up. And again, a, uh, an easy way for me to do that is with a cotton swab. Um, I like it because it uh, doesn't leave a lot of residue and it usually helps you mop it up pretty good. So that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to do a little house cleaning here. I'm looking at the gear grease that I'm taking off as well. I want to see if it's particularly dirty or if it's gritty or uh, if there's any other kind of contamination that got in the reel uh, prior to this service. And this one looks average or ordinary. It doesn't look like it's been infiltrated with any sand or any other problems. Uh, so we're just going to do that little clean. We can, you don't have to get it, uh, you, know, you know, you don't have to use an ultrasonic cleaner or anything to get every last bit of grease off. It is grease. And as long as it's not dirty or uh, dried or caked or impacting, uh, you know, sitting in the teeth, teeth here and not moving, uh, then, then you're okay. Speaking of the teeth, you want to check all of the teeth on this gear, both sides, the, the gear side this way, and then look at the profile of the teeth, making sure that they're all uniform and not chipped. Do the same on the back, on the piece that drives the, uh, the crosswind gear. And then uh, if you did have clogs in these channels, this is a soft brush, almost uh, just like a heavy toothbrush. You could also use a wire brush if you want, but you can clean all of the channels of the, uh, the main gear out simply by using that little brush. And then I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. And then the last part here, we have the cross wind block. If I can get it off, it's sitting on a stud. A lot of junk behind it, so that's a good reason why uh, you wear the gloves. Obviously, I don't have it on my gloved hand here. Would have liked to. And then here's the, uh, the cross wind gear behind that. And again, you want to take that, if you can, take that off. Look behind it. We could use a little grease inside here. Uh, look to make sure that it's clean in the, in the channel. And this one's a very clean reel, so we don't have to worry about that. And then just re-lube. So I'm going to use a, um, a pen precision reel grease, not because it's a pen reel, but because it's uh, a real grease. Uh, and I recommend that whatever reels you're servicing, make sure you use the appropriate lubrications for fishing reels. And again, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a pen reel lube for a pen reel. Uh, it doesn't hurt, but uh, you can use other manufacturers' grease. But by all means, use something that's set for a fishing reel. I've seen people use everything from Vaseline to, uh, to car axle grease. And uh, it, you know, it, it'll either be too thick or too thin. It'll either wear prematurely or not provide the lubrication that's needed. And in those cases, uh, you're going to just wind up servicing it again, probably shorter than, uh, than you need to. And when do you need to? About every year. Uh, depending on use, it's like anything else. Uh, it's like an automobile. If you drive your car a lot, then uh, you certainly want to do uh, oil changes more frequently than if you don't. That's the proper orientation. We're going to drop that back down to the bottom here. I'll show you how that kind of rolls down. I'm going to set this back in. I 
and that's going to sit behind the crosswind uh, or the axle bushing. We can put a little bit of lube in there. You don't have to take that bushing off, and a bushing is not a moving part, it's just a, uh, a collar. Okay, we're set up there. We're going to go grab our main gear then. Remember, this is the reverse order of how we took this out. We're going to go ahead and uh, lube the teeth on the main gear, and you don't have to get grease in every tooth. Uh, just, you know, it will spread as you crank the reel. And then I've got the, bo the bearings, so I'm going to use Real X, which is a uh, fishing reel oil, because I oil my bearings. And I'm just going to put oil on both of the bearings that uh, came out of this reel. I'm just going to make sure that they spin easily, which they do. I'm just holding the internal collar with my fingers and spinning the outside, so those work fine. And then I'm just going to put these aside for a moment, and I'm going to go up top to the rotor, just to check to make sure everything's clean underneath. And again, this reel was turning fine when I purchased it, so I didn't expect to see any issues in here. But if the reel gets dropped in the sand, and I was recently out uh, fishing and saw a uh, fellow land a nice bluefish, and uh, as he was unhooking the fish, he, uh, he laid his reel down in the sand. It's probably not an uncommon practice. Unfortunately, it's not a very good thing if you're uh, taking care of reels. Okay, and then we just want to unloosen the collar nut here after we took the uh, the holding uh, clip and set screw off. And I'm laying them there because I expect to go right back in. So this has got a bushing. It's got the anti-reverse gear. It's got a burring and it's got the pinion gear and they're all stacked up and if you had to service them, which I'm not going to do in this video, but if you had to surf, uh, service them, here's how it goes. There's two screws that you see in the cover. Uh, they come off, then here's your burring, a collar, the anti-reverse gear uh, burring, second burring underneath, and the pinion shaft. And all of those can be pulled very easily by pulling these two screws. I don't need to do that on this. I'm just simply going to clean it. I really wanted to see if there was any salt or other buildup inside. There's a little bit of that, so I'm just uh, taking my care there. And I'm just going to put a drop of oil underneath the rotor here, which is the kick uh, shaft for the bale. I'm going to open up the bale. I'm just going to put a drop of oil in those two slots where the bale connects and just work it in a little bit. That's all you need to do on a bale service. If you had a broken spring, you could remove the screw and reset the spring or replace the spring. All right, we have two bearings here. The one is easy, we do that from the top. The other one is sitting right here underneath. So if you just simply roll the reel over and give that a healthy drink, you're good there. When you're at it, check. Now this one was not operating erratically, so we're okay. But check to make sure that none of these uh, grooves in the pinion gear are scarred or bent or broken or missing, just like we had done on the main gear. This one's fine. Uh, okay, so we're going to reset the, the rotor then. We're going to take that and put that onto the uh, pinion gear. I'm going to take the rotor cap nut and put that in there. This is a 13 millimeter nut, so You'll see in the background here that I have a tray full of uh, wrenches. It's because there's nothing standard about these nuts. But uh, if, you, uh, if you have the tools close at hand, you rarely have an issue with uh, just trying to grab something without putting the reel down, maybe losing track of where you were, losing a part or whatever. So that's how you put it back on. We've all lubed in the inside there, and I've showed you what to do should you have to replace a pinion. Give it a nice spin, and boy, that's spinning nicely, which it should with those two bearings up top there. It's a beautiful reel. Okay, I'm going to take the main gear then. We've lubed that up. We're going to put that back in. Now, we had a shim on here, and we still do. If you, if you took that shim off for whatever reason, you would want to make sure that you put it on before you close that reel up. We're going to bring the shaft. set the axle shaft in here and we're going to align the screw hole with the hole in the cross wind block you can do that with a little pin finishing nail anything kind of really to just make sure it's set proper which it is and then go get that long screw 
that long screw belongs like that and we should be able to tighten down the screw to complete that portion of the reassembly. And then from a below standpoint and from a reel standpoint, we're pretty much done. So it's a nice solid reel. It's not that terribly complicated. It's well made. It's got the uh, four bearings plus the anti-reverse bearing. This is the uh, bearing now for the side plate that we uh, just oiled. And now the side plate goes on, clamps in, and now we just need to find the four screws. So a reel like this that's not complicated, but it is well engineered, is going to last an awful long time with the proper service. So what is proper service? So I like to say to, uh, if you don't fish much, if you're a weekend angler, if you have this reel out 10 times or 15 times over the course of the season, you don't have to kill yourself unless you find out that you've dumped the reel in the water or something. Uh, once a year is fine. Uh, just make sure you do what we did here. Clean everything up, re-lube, re-oil, and uh, I like to do that at the end of the season. That way, if it's sitting in storage in a hot place or a cold place, uh, it's properly lubricated and nothing has the opportunity to dry out. If, you, uh, if you're fishing more than that, if you're fishing 20, 30 times over the course of the season, 40 times, maybe daily, uh, then I would like to do a mid-season mid service. So about halfway through, go ahead and take it apart. And again, uh, it's really about keeping the, the reel well oiled and um, greased. It's not about uh, much more than that. And as you can tell from the length of this video, it's not, uh, it's not an all day project to do that. We just put the handle back on and give it a nice spin. I really do like this reel. So I got a bargain, as everybody knows uh, from that other video. I bought the St. Croix riot rod and the slammer reel for $40 at a flea market. Uh, what can I say? It, uh, it was a good sale. Here's your slammer uh, spool then with the slammer drag system. There is a, uh, there's two pieces to this. There's a C-ring up top here that we want to pull out. Not the easiest thing to do. This one's very tight and there's, uh, there's limited access to getting this off. Sometimes you need a variety of tools. Sometimes it's like the blade of this, uh, this knife. And this is a spring. It's a C-clip spring. So make sure that you cover it as you go in to, to do the service. You don't want this thing shooting off somewhere and then uh, being on your hands and knees looking around quite a bit. So what we have here then is I'm looking to make sure that the channel is clear. That's my most important concern at the moment. And we are. I'm just going to take a, a little Q-tip to wind that down. And we've got a hard washer here, so there's no need to, to service that. They're kind of self-lubricating. We're just going to put that back in. We're going to put the spring back on. And just like we did taking it out, keep your finger on that spring going back in because it can still shoot uh, until it's properly seated. And it's properly seated when they, it clicks into the groove. So make sure that uh, you're eyeing it correctly as you do that. Okay, the business end of the drag system is down here. And I notice I have just a little bit of sand in there. So again, back to that Q-tip or cotton swab and get that out. The slammer drag is held in by three screws. So you want to take those out. And generally with this, I'll just make sure they're loose and that they kind of fall within the spool if they do come out all the way. And there should be, looking at this, there should be two drags underneath here. And we're just going to make sure that they're done properly. So the first thing I do is remove that plate. Here's your plate and the three screws. I'm just going to lay them off on the side. We're not going to go any further than just uh, right here. And then we should have our, our drag. That was my, uh, my little pin that I used to pull these out with. And here's my drag. So we want to make sure we clean this up. A rag is fine. It's a paper towel. I like paper towels. They're disposable. The rags tend to uh, accumulate uh, stuff on them. And when they accumulate the stuff on them, you get the uh, risk of transferring that stuff to other pieces that you're working on. This is a HT100 drag, so it gets drag grease. We're going to put a little bit on both sides, and we're going to use that, uh, that gloved hand now as a tool 
to spread the HT100 grease around the washer. And you just want a light sheen on this. You don't need to over lube it. And actually if you do, what you want to do is grab that paper towel again and just wipe off any excess. So that's the, the drag system. You look here, there's three notches inside of it and there's three points on those drags. So make sure that you sit the washer in those indentations. And then the best way to do this now is to get yourself set up with the screws inside the cap if you have a small problem like I do. With small pieces and parts. That center piece is independent of this ring and you'll see that I have the, the metal washer and the, uh, oh, I just shot it out of there, didn't I? And the spring sitting off of that. So that's the click spring for the anti-reverse. We gotta get that back in there. Then we wanna put the metal washer back on. And then we want to put the three, at least one of them to get started, screws back in. And then we can lay this down. Now that orientation there is important. So let's find the holes so we can get it close. And again, that, uh, that little pin always helps with this. Okay, so we have the one screw in there. We should be able to set that one, and if we set the one, then we can get the other two in. Okay, so we got that. One of the things that uh, everybody knows, I have a little bit of problem with small screws, and uh, one of the tricks that seems to happen is if you take a little bit of grease into the slot of the screw on the end of your screwdriver, you can generally hold it enough to get it started like that. I'll try and get the other one started too while I've got a little bit of grease on there. That seems to take the slack out of the blade and just enough to get it, get you going there. Okay, so we, we've got these in place, we've got the drags in place now. Just tighten these down. We can just set that on top of the axle shaft. Grab that button. And we're ready to go fishing. Give it one more try, make sure that we've got the drag tight. And I'm going to tighten it all the way down, make sure that it's, it's certainly not moving there. So, uh, and then back it up a little bit if you like. To make sure you've got the free play that you want, which we do. So we're in good shape. We're ready to go fishing. There we go. The Pen Slammer 260. It's what it's made about. It's a nice simplistic design. Uh, it's got the kind of the water shielded uh, drag system because it's hiding underneath the spool here. It's got the four ball bearings plus the uh, the shield, uh, the anti-reverse mechanism. That's an instant anti-reverse. It's a nice compact form uh, format. And it's uh, going to catch a lot of fish for me, particularly attached to that uh, St. Croix rod. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, segment. I do apologize if you're not seeing the videos coming at you that you may have requested. As I mentioned uh, before, and kind of a little play on words, we're being slammed in the shop right now with all of the, the reels that are coming in uh, for repair, which is fine. Uh, but I am going to try to continue to post as many of these as I can. So with that, I, I thank you for viewing. If you like it, please indicate that. If you want to see more, please subscribe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.